All right, so I wasn't planning on being out today, but uh, my daughters ended up getting sick, so I'm here, and I'm going to go over a few things with you and then set you guys loose on your groups. So um, as you can see today, we got uh, today is Wednesday, October 21st. We still are going to follow through with our two goals. I thought long and hard on this, and I think that uh, you'll be able to follow through with them. Um, group A, all of you got started yesterday. You're going to continue with your projects. You got to really explore. I understand that um, I gave you a whole bunch of terms that you're not sure of. You got to look them up. You got to see what you can make sense of them and uh, get ready because you're going to present on Friday. Now, when I come back tomorrow, I'll be able to answer questions and maybe um, guide you in any way. So ask, uh, write down those questions, but do what you can and really dive into it and see what you got going. Group B, we're still going to work together. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Uh, but again, we got a quiz that we got to get ready for this Friday, and I want to make sure that I don't make you behind on that too. So you can see group one, 100% of you have to be ready to present Friday. Group B, uh, I want to make sure that each of you can get at least a B or higher on that quiz on Friday so that I can put positive marks in the grade book and keep everybody's grades nice and high. Uh, we still have the bonus acids and bases on Study Island if you get a blue ribbon. And for some reason that says due Friday. I'm probably going to postpone that to Tuesday because I know I was going to get your login and passwords and get that to you today if you didn't have that because I wasn't able to be there today. I have to go ahead and um, and get that when I get back on Thursday. And that means that I'll probably go ahead and change this due date to next Tuesday. And everything will be okay. Uh, bonus is always good, even if you're doing really well right now, for if you have a bad day, you'll be able to pick that back up and, and it'll help you out um, later on. So. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Hopefully by now, if not, uh, the substitute has taken attendance. Make sure that's recorded for me so I know who to follow up with uh, tomorrow. If that hasn't been done, go ahead and pause the video at this point and uh, take that and then we'll move on. All right, so group A, you're gonna be working on the outdoor side of the room. You got the computers. I actually do have so the earbuds that you can either use or they delivered headphones today, meaning you were yesterday, um, you're allowed to use them as long as you put them back in the box. They're located by my entry door in those big boxes. I haven't come up with an organizational kind of system for them yet. So you're allowed to use those headphones um, if you need to research things and have everything out loud so it's not interfering with group B. Or even if you just want to put them over your ears because they're going to be watching this video the whole time. All right, group B, it looks like we're going to be working together. Um, I got a couple videos, a couple projects that I'm going to get you started on, so definitely get set. So go ahead and pause the video at this point so that everybody can get in their sides. Again, group A on the computers, headphones. You're allowed working in groups of one or two on the outdoor side of the room. Group B, you're on the right side of the room, or the indoor side of the room, and you're getting ready. If you don't know what group you're in, I do have a, a group of uh, index cards, paper clipped on my desk, and you can definitely take a look at that or have the substitute take a look at that and get you where you need to be. I believe all extra papers are also there for the projects. I think they're on the black um, just computer uh, area right there by the, um, right there by my computer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, with Group B. Yesterday we started, a lot of us named our plans. We've kind of gone over a couple things. And uh, today we're going to start by watching a video. In this video, it's going to kind of go over photosynthesis. Again, it's going to also connect it to respiration, which is important because they do go hand in hand. So I'm going to phase my face out. We're going to watch this video, take a look at it, and then, uh, and then we'll come back and chat um, before you move on to your next task. So here we go. So in this presentation, we're going to take a look at two things, photosynthesis and respiration, and we're going to look at how they're related to one another. So first we need to think about what photosynthesis is, and it's basically one of the most important chemical reactions on the planet. 
some people may argue that it, it may, it's not for all life the most important, but um, for certainly for organisms that live on the surface of the earth, uh, it is. Now, when you start thinking about organisms that live like way down deep in the ocean near hydrothermal vents, they don't rely on uh, sunlight for their energy. They rely on the chemicals in the water for their energy. But we're not going to talk to them, so we're going to call this the most important. So when we think about what happens, what is the process of photosynthesis? We need to think about what happens and where it happens. So what happens is light energy is converted into chemical energy. Okay, so light energy is changed to another type of energy and stored. Okay, and we'll talk about that in, uh, in uh, the third quarter when we talk about energy. We'll talk about conversion of energy. But for now, we need to think about it in this particular instance. So that energy, again, is stored as sugar, as a carbohydrate. And this occurs in plants and also in some algae. Now, the plant needs light energy, carbon dioxide, and water in order to have this chemical reaction take place. And the place where it happens in the plant is a little organelle, part of a cell, called a chloroplast. Okay, so there's chlorophyll, and that's what makes the plant green. That chlorophyll is actually able to use the energy from the sun to convert water and carbon dioxide into sugar. So, what happens in this chemical reaction? Well, it's pretty simple. The plant uses energy from the sun, again, to combine water and carbon dioxide. So here's a little diagram that might help you out. You've got energy from the sun combining carbon, so carbon dioxide and water are joined together using that energy from the sun. And that produces glucose and also oxygen. So sugar and oxygen are the byproducts. So at the bottom here, we've got a description of this chemical reaction in words. So again, we need to make sure we remember that it's in the chloroplast of the plant, or the plant cell, I should say, that this chemical reaction takes place. And usually, uh, the, after the chemical reaction has occurred, the glucose, or the starch, is actually stored in the plant, and that chemical energy is stored in the bonds of the sugar molecule. So how would a scientist write this? Because the scientist isn't just going to write down all those words. Scientists use chemical symbols to represent what they're trying to talk about. So a scientist would write this a little differently than what we just did. It would look something like this. And you're probably saying, I don't get that. What is that supposed to mean? So what this means is that there are six carbon dioxide molecules combining with six water molecules. And when that happens, it forms one glucose molecule, which is that big long one there, the C6H12O6. And it also, another product would be the six oxygen molecules. So let's take a look at this one more time, a little more graphically. Okay, so there's where it all starts. Okay, the chlorophyll that traps energy from the sun. So we have the sun which gives energy to the chlorophyll, and the plant uses that energy to convert carbon dioxide, which enters through the little holes in the leaves that we talked about in that activity in class, called the stomata, and the water, which is absorbed by the roots, enters the plant as well, and using the energy from the sun, that's converted to oxygen, which is released into the air, and glucose, or sugar, which is converted to starch, which is stored in other parts of the plant, like uh, the stem and the fruit and things like that. So why is this important? Well, it all boils down to the fact that animals are not able to make their own food. Okay, So we cannot get our energy directly from the sun, but the plants can. So that's where the beginning of the food chain is. The plants are the first step in the food chain. 
And also the plants produce oxygen for animals and other living organisms to use. So that's a very, very important process that goes on in the world. Now respiration, there are two types actually. So the two types of respiration are breathing and something called cellular respiration. So cellular respiration, just like photosynthesis, is a chemical reaction. And you can think of it as probably the most important chemical reaction in our bodies, because that's where we get our energy from. So again, it's a process like photosynthesis. And here, instead of taking place in a chloroplast, because uh, not too many animals, actually no animal that I know of, has a chloroplast that's strictly in plant cells. But animal cells have something called mitochondria, and that's where respiration takes place. So what happens is the mitochondria takes in nutrients, the glucose, and also oxygen, and instead of creating something, it actually breaks down the glucose and releases energy, and that energy is used by the cell. So this is what's known as cellular respiration. And it takes place in all living things, including plants. So like I said earlier, this is basically the reverse of photosynthesis. Okay, An animal takes in glucose and oxygen, and it breaks it down into carbon dioxide and water. And when it does that, there's a release of energy. So that's where we get our energy from. So this process of a cell creating its own energy is known as cellular respiration. And I guess you really can't say it creates its own energy. It just breaks down the compounds, uh, uh, the sugar compound, by using oxygen and forms energy and carbon dioxide and water. So here's a graphic look at respiration. So oxygen is taken in from the air, and then an organism takes in carbohydrates from plants or by eating other animals or something like that. And the mitochondria takes in those things, and it breaks down the carbohydrate. And when it does that, it releases carbon dioxide into the air and also water vapor. So when we breathe, we, you can feel, uh, you know, if you breathe up against some glass, you'll actually see, uh, like you'll fog up the mirror or whatever, and that's because there's water in our breath. Okay, so those two things are released into the air, and energy is released into the cell, and it's used by the organism. So here's the chemical equation for respiration. We've got sugar molecule, so that's C6H12O6, that's glucose, and you add some oxygen to it, and what's created is carbon dioxide and water. So there's the uh, chemical equation written down as a chemical formula. So if we look at number 10 in your graphic organizer, I want you to look at these pictures and tell me if there are any similarities that you notice. So in the graphic organizer, you need to list at least three. All right, so I'm looking at these two images, and I want you to take a second and look at them too. Um, on this side, we can see um, sun energy, light energy going in, water's going in, carbon dioxide's going in creating the sugar and out is the oxygen. Whereas over here we have the sugar going in, the oxygen going in, and carbon dioxide is coming out, water is coming out, and energy is coming out. So on the left you have photosynthesis, on the right you have cellular respiration. So really quickly uh, I want you to pause and kind of discuss 
are there any similarities? What are the differences? Um, what do you see? And then uh, here in a few seconds, I'll go ahead and start this up again. So pause the video, see if there's any compare and contrast, and you can actually put a couple of your your kind of inputs on the back of the questions that we've been working on for your quiz that will take place Friday. What similarities do you see between photosynthesis and your, so sorry about that, this one is your photosynthesis and this one is your cellular respiration. Take a look at them. All right, and then we're going to continue on with the video. Here we go. So now we can look at the chemical equation for photosynthesis and respiration and compare them. And it's pretty obvious what's happening. In photosynthesis, energy is taken in by the plant and it converts carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. In respiration, that sugar and oxygen is broken down into carbon dioxide and water and energy is released. So we've got the same things involved in both of these uh, chemical reactions. They're just happening in, in a different order. So I guess you could say that without photosynthesis, we couldn't have respiration. All right, so that brings us to our next activity. Let me go ahead and stop this before another video starts. Um, I'm going to have you guys start a project. Um, it's a little bit different, but basically when you think of photosynthesis, so far we've done our songs, we chatted a little bit yesterday, you've watched a couple videos, um, but in the long run, it's not really put together too simply. So here is your project. Let me bring it over here. All right. You're going to create a children's book about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. All right, you may have to do a little bit of research on this, but basically it says photosynthesis and cellular respiration can be very challenging topics. Fourth grade teachers are given the challenge to introduce these difficult topics to their students. Your job is to create a children's picture book that you could, you theoretically, could read to fourth graders, and who knows, we could video them and send them over to legend, um, fourth graders to help them understand photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So it says you may work in partners or as an individual, there are no trios, so groups of one or two, create a way to explain photosynthesis and cellular respiration to children, so you're going to have to kind of tear back the vocabulary. Incorporate the process of photosynthesis and cellular respiration into your story. And the story should just be just be kind of focusing on that photosynthesis. So I gave this lovely introduction that theoretically you, I mean, you could use this introduction and then just go from there. It says, Phil, the photon of light, was shot out of the sun, hurling his way towards the earth. He cut through the atmosphere like a hot knife through butter. His target? an innocent looking plant. More specifically, that innocent looking plant's beautiful, lush, green leaves, and so on. So you could take that story start and uh, go with it, or you can kind of make your own. Um, you'll be scored on being creative, making it something that has a little bit of quality to it, having illustrations, and of course the accuracy. Did you really talk about photosynthesis? Now, I have a kind of a silly one right here that I can bring up, I think. Okay, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can bring it over here. That a group did last year. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to bring this over here. There we go. And here is their book. You're looking at photosynthesis. Good old Adam and Will. Um and they started once upon a time there was a tree named roots that simple fourth graders i think could get that and one day roots was walking down the street and ran into sunny the very cool sun um asking about photosynthesis 
and then all of a sudden they have to go to their teacher to explain it. Obviously, they just found images from um, from Google that you could do too. Um, they did theirs in PowerPoint. Um, you can work on yours in PowerPoint, or you can actually work on yours in, let me move myself back over here, uh, on a blank sheet of paper, and then we can publish it a little bit better tomorrow and into the end of this week. So you're basically creating a storyline, some characters that can easily explain photosynthesis, at least the basis of the photosynthesis, and we'll talk more about it tomorrow. All right. I'll talk to you then. Good luck.